Hiya then folks, I'm the Tight Yorkshireman. Welcome to this updated review of the Jackery portable power generators. You're probably aware that around sort of six to eight weeks ago, we were given the Jackery 240 portable power generator and the Solar Saga 100 solar panel to test and review. I'll put the link to that video in the description below if you want to watch it in full. One of the conclusions I did come to though was, if I was spending my own money to buy stuff out of the Jackery range, I probably wouldn't bother with this solar panel, I would buy just a normal standard solar panel. But in effect with the money I'd save there, I would upgrade from the Jackery 240 to the Jackery 500. Jackery have then since been back in touch with me and said, in that case would I like to review the Jackery 500 and see whether the difference between the units is worthwhile and this is a better and bigger product. So it seemed a logical step if we're going to review something and suggest something as in we think it's good but maybe the bigger one's better and we get a chance to review the bigger one then we'll do the review on the bigger one. I think overall the units themselves are pretty similar but if we open it up and have a look just see if there's any obvious differences and then we'll get it on charge and point to the test. What I will say is, in the time we've had the Jackery 240, it has basically been the sole use for charging our laptop up, which obviously the laptop we use for watching YouTube videos and editing and recording these videos on. One of the tests we are going to try with this is seeing if it had run a small telly and a PlayStation, which is an ideal test to do, because our youngest lad Joel, when he's here, that's all he's interested in. He's not bothered about the canals and the boats, he just wants to get on his games. So this could be an ideal scenario for powering that when we've got this powering our laptop. Let's have a look then. We've got the bag of gubbins and I'm sure it'll be the same as what was in that one when we got that. And yes, it's the charge lead so we can charge it off 12 volts through a cigarette lighter. So that can be through sort of your car, motor home or as we've got on the boat. Or we can charge it normal 240 volt. So if we're going out for the day or for the weekend, we can charge it up before we go. So let's move those out of the way. If we now lift it up, there are the instructions. I'll not read through them now, but I will have a good read through before we start using it properly, just to make sure we're not going to do anything that's going to damage the unit in the future. But yeah check it out I'm guessing this is obviously heavier than that one that one's around three kilograms in weight so I'm guessing this one's probably getting on maybe five well let's have a look what's the uh, what's the differences first off we've got three USB points as opposed to only two on that one we've got the input where we charge it either via the solar or the connectors that I've shown you there we've got a display button which if I press that that shows it's come and it's at 49% charged. So obviously the first thing we're going to be doing is charging it up. We've got the 240 volt socket. That's obviously to take the power off like we plug the laptop or the telly or whatever into. We can charge things through a cigarette lighter. And I'm not sure what those two are. I'm going to have to have a look at that because those two aren't on that one. So that'll be something to investigate. But first off, let's get it charging. And it's a dead simple action, all we do is unzip that, pull the cord out and that should plug straight into there. Yeah, the little lights come on, it's now saying, obviously like we said, 49% charge and immediately it's taking 20, uh, 20 watts of power. I'll get this set up so it's nicely in the sun. I will say as well, these have an MPPT charge controller in them, which is quite a clever charge controller. So that works out how much power is coming in through the sun and how much power this actually needs. As this gets towards being full, it reduces that power so as not to damage the battery. So the last few percent take quite a while. I will check up on the charging times, etc. But we did find that the quoted charging times for the Jackery 240 were there or thereabouts. I'm sure it'll be the same for this, but we will give it a check and just to make sure. So yeah, let's get this set up fully in the sun and let's leave it to charge and we'll have a look at it later.
couple of minutes later then and I've got my brew and I've now got it set up so it is pointing directly at the sun. Today is a bit sunshine and cloud day. At the minute the sun has just sort of dipped behind one of the clouds and looking at it it's going to be a good 10-15 minutes before we get back into full sunshine. So we'll see how we go for today but at the minute we're drawing sort of around 12 or 13 watts um, just as I plugged it in and the sun was directly shining on it we were around sort of 60 62 watts so it's going to be a varied day for the amount of power but let's leave it to it let's see how much power we can get in there today so the first element we need to look at is just how long it takes to charge this unit up in the first place and in that first instance of charging up there that we were just looking at, it took the whole of that day and most of the following day because obviously the weather itself wasn't particularly brilliant. We had a lot of cloud and some sunshine. The figures that Jackery quote for charging up says if you plug it into a normal 240 volt mains, it'll take about seven hours to charge from completely flat to fully charged. If you're charging it through a cigarette lighter adapter, like you find in most cars or motorhomes or even like we have here on the boat, they reckon it'll take about eight hours to charge up that way. If you're using a generator, again, it's about seven hours, the same as just plugging into a normal 240 volt mains. Solar charging, they reckon, takes up to 14 hours. And obviously that's very dependent on the weather. And one thing we do have to bear in mind at the moment is we're in autumn time here in the UK at the moment and we're not actually getting 14 hours of daylight in a full day. So if we flatten the battery one evening, we're not actually going to be able to fully charge it during the course of the following day. It's perhaps one thing that I think maybe Jackery could look at in a bit more detail is because on the next unit up, the Jackery 1000, there's actually two inputs so you can use two lots of solar panels or a 200 watt panel which would obviously halve the charging time, so that would bring it back down to sort of seven hours, which I think is a bit more realistic, because like I say, surely you want it to charge fully in one full day. So from a full charge, let's have a little look at what we can actually run off it. Jackery quote that you can run a small fridge, which they're calling a 60 watt fridge, which to be honest is probably more like what we'd call a cool box type thing, rather than what you would imagine as a full on fridge. But they reckon for that you can run it for 39 hours off one full charge. It should give you 10 full charges of a drone battery. You should be able to run a laptop or MacBook type appliance that again they quote it's sort of taking 30 watts of power as an average for about 36 hours off it. And Jackery quote to run a television you should get 8 hours run time. Again, that depends on what television it is that you're actually running and that's where we come into the main test that we were going to do on it during the time we've been trialling it. As we mentioned before, the Jackery 240 we use to charge our laptop up and that is basically the sole charging source for that laptop. When we got off of the Jackery 500, we thought that would be ideal for running the TV and PlayStation, which at the moment we can't actually run other than when we're on landline shore power as on the boat itself with no actual 240 volt inverter we can only run 12 volt equipment. The 500 watt Jackery therefore gives enough output to be able to run a telly and a PlayStation at the same time. So the way that we've tested it is at the start of each evening we've made sure it's up to 100% charge and see just how long it lasts running both those appliances. And we found on average it's running for about three and a half hours before it completely flattens it. I would say with that, obviously it's a PlayStation 4 that we're running and the television that we had to run off it is quite a big old television and it's rated at 160 watts. So obviously if we were to get a smaller, more modern telly, it would obviously run for a lot longer than that. But then in effect to extend that time beyond the three and a half hours, we've then plugged this in so it's then drawing from our main leisure batteries and that then in effect is just kind of really using this as an inverter itself it's transforming that 12 volt power into the 240 volt power, which has then meant that we've been able to run that PlayStation and television for the rest of the evening. Overall then, we would say it's quite a good piece of equipment. It does have its pluses and its minuses. I suppose like you'd expect with any piece of equipment, nothing quite, it's the nail on the head every time. I would certainly say, due to its size and weight, it's not so much of a mobile piece of equipment, Clearly, if you're going somewhere in your car or motorhome or boat, it's not a problem. 
but you certainly won't want to be carrying this around all day in for instance like in a backpack or just carrying it like i said it's actually nearly six and a half kilograms and it is quite bulky so it does sort of take away part of that element of being a mobile unit one of the other negatives i would pick up on is just how long it does take to charge from solar. Like I say, it's quoting 14 hours, and during the test that we've done, that would seem to be about right. And that is an awful long time to wait for something that potentially you're going to be using day in, day out. I really do think that idea of being able to use two solar panels on it would be a good one, and perhaps something that Jackery should look into for the future. One of the positives that we picked up on from the Jackery 240 was it is an ideal thing to have as an emergency backup. Because of the sort of batteries it's got, it only loses 3% of its power per month. So if you to fully charge it, stick it in a cupboard and forget about it, and then even 12 months later, you come to need it, it's still got well over half its charging capabilities in there. And this particular model has also got a little flashlight on there, which, again, you're not really going to want to use that as a carry around torch. But in that emergency situation, it might just help you along the way. The clear advantage for the Jackery 500 over the Jackery 240 is it's got over double the amount of power supply in there. It's got 500 watts available as opposed to 240 watts when it's fully charged. This has also got a 500 watt inverter, whereas obviously on the Jackery 240, it's a 240 watt inverter. That means you can obviously power higher rated items from it. There is the flip side that the higher rated items do draw the power quicker, which again comes back to how quick you're going to be able to recharge this. One thing we did pick up on this is, the fan that's in there to keep it cool is a lot louder than the one on the Jackery 240. On the Jackery 240 you can barely hear the fan when it's running. On this, it clearly is audible, and it does seem to run for a lot more of the time. The Jackery 240 just seems to cut in and out once in a while, whereas with this, more or less, while ever you're using the inverter, the fan is running. It's not a major issue, but obviously if you've got it on because you're wanting to watch television or listen to a radio or something like that, obviously you do then have that background noise. The reason for this review then was to see if the Jackery 500 is a better product and more usable than the Jackery 240. And I don't think it's a question that you can really answer with a yes or no. Because there's pluses and minuses to both units. Obviously the Jackery 240 is smaller, easier to move around and charges up quicker. However, the Jackery 500 is that bit bigger, takes longer to charge, but holds more power and can run more equipment off it. I think therefore it's a case of summing up what do you need. Is it more the short, sharp power for potentially smaller periods of time? Or do you need that larger power for the longer periods of time and be prepared to wait for it to charge if you're charging it off solar? The Jackery 240 is used around the boat every day now. It is basically the sole means of charging that we have for our laptop. And likewise, the Jackery 500, in the time that we've had that, that's now become the sole power source for running the PlayStation and the television. So they are definitely getting use around the boat. I guess it's down to everyone's own opinion to decide would they be useful for your situation? Our boat does have solar panels and leisure batteries built into it. So these are clearly just a supplementary product. But while they are getting use on a daily basis, it does show that there is potentially a need for them in and around daily life whilst living aboard a narrow boat. Hopefully then you found this review useful and it might give you some ideas as to whether one of these Jackery products is any use for you. If you are interested in them, we have put a link in the description below that takes you to the current prices on Amazon, where at the moment, at the time of filming, they are on offer. So thanks for watching then, folks. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye.